Bryn, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome Thank everybody you. Watching, who's watching live. Welcome everybody who's watching perhaps later on the replay or the recording. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so I'm so pleased today to um, welcome Emily Gilliland uh, um, from Master Your Midlife. And I thought it'd be really interesting to have a chat with Emily because she's got a really interesting background and lots of tips to share. So welcome, Emily. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. You're yeah, absolutely welcome. So we we met quite a few years ago in a completely different setting, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was a, a long time. When did we first meet? Was it? It was at... through Luna Hive. Ah, was... yes. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. was a platform for health practitioner, wasn't it? R roughly. I mean, it was. Yeah, it was kind of anything that women might need in in their their lives there was a it was kind of a directory of people that could help in in the area wasn't it mm, um, exactly yeah, yeah yeah that was yeah that was quite a few years ago now wasn't it <laughs> it feels <laughs> like, a long time ago <laughs> yeah especially with the pandemic in between it's like oh that was like a lifetime <laughs> exactly exactly so do you want to um share you know how you help women how you kind of started helping mm -hmm. women and then how you kind of evolved and and move and added kind of disciplines onto your um you know your toolbox as as such you know do you want to share that <laughs> yeah sure so I started off originally as um, a personal trainer and I specialized kind of immediately um in working with pregnancy and postnatal that was kind of my first thing that that I did because at the time I had really young children I had felt quite abandoned by the kind of medical system in terms of you know how to feel better and get fit again afterwards so it was very much like this is what I need to do mm -hmm. um, and then you know as that kind of progressed um, I started to um, be, get interested in menopause because I was working with women who were kind of on that cusp of you know they they had quite young children but they were also starting to experience those kind of perimenopausal symptoms and I just felt like then there was something more that they needed than just the kind of, you know, the PT type stuff. Yeah. Um. So first of all, I trained as a menopause coach and that just gave me a really good kind of holistic overview of what women actually are going through during this period and what we can do to help. Um, so lots of kind of knowledge about not just what's happening with your hormones and why things are happening but also you know what we can do to kind of help ourselves um so obviously there's the obvious kind of you know HRT and all of that kind of stuff but that's not necessarily an option for a lot of people so it's about finding other other things um that will work for people you know that whether that's kind of within kind of the movement space or you know nutrition and all of that kind of you know big big holistic kind of view of what what people need what, and what, then yeah. <laughs> sorry yeah. I'm like, no, I'm and then after that I very much realized as I was working that you know it's women yes they need exercise yes they need good food yes they need rest and sleep and everything else but they they need to also just have the ability to go a little bit deeper and really work out what they want from their lives at this point because it is a such a period of change mm -hmm. that it's a really you know a lot of people get a little bit scared about it but I like to look at it as like an opportunity to actually really reassess what you're doing with your life and um so I trained as a therapeutic coach in order to be able to help people with that aspect as well great so before we go into that and even you know sort of deeper what, what what was your perception of menopause as you got older? You know, as for me personally, you know, as a nutritional therapist, you know, until my 30s, I was just completely ignoring that side mm. of life because I just thought this is so not me yet. Mm -hmm. um, my mum never spoke about menopause to myself. I know she had the odd hot flushes and things, but like literally that's all she would mention, you know? Yeah. Um, which I think she still has hot flushes actually in her 70s. So mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I then went to a conference as part of my studies when I was studying nutrition, mm -hmm. and um, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll go to this menopause conference. I really need to learn about the topic. I should really know. Um, and it was the biggest eye opener ever. I, you know, this is when I basically learned that 
menopause is the end of the process almost you mm. know it's that point where your period stop but actually the, the symptom starts much earlier yeah you know? and so when did you discover that um so I think like you I I had kind of just ignored it I knew it was something that was coming but in my head it was like something that happened in the future and you know nobody had ever really talked about it, it you know the same as you my mum never spoke about it she obviously went through it but you know she didn't let any of us know anything that might have been happening and then the only other thing that I ever heard about it was from people who'd had a really bad time with it and then it sounded incredibly scary and like something that you just didn't want to think about because you were like this is going to be horrible <laughs> and, and yeah like you it um it wasn't until I started um looking into menopause at because I was working with people who were starting to, you know for what I thought was quite young having some funny symptoms and they weren't really sure what was going on and you know I went off and did a little bit of research and realized that actually you know the the process starts happening way way earlier than a lot of us think yeah. um and you know you don't even have to be kind of early uh, for perimenopause for it to be starting to affect you in your 30s mm -hmm. it you know those those things can start to be hormones mm -hmm. are changing hormones are going a little bit roller coastery for quite a long time mm -hmm. um yeah and like you I didn't I didn't really know that until I, I started to look into it and then it made a lot of sense <laughs> yeah. yes and working with post um, sorry with working with postnatal ladies have you mm -hmm. noticed any because obviously I think there's more and more women that have children later in life yeah and have you noticed women that would come to you for PT or massage therapy mm -hmm. that would experience these symptoms straight after having a baby yeah so that it, it is becoming a lot more common because people are having babies a little bit later than maybe they were you know in the previous generations they can be right in that postnatal period have really young kids but have actually start to get that kind of perimenopausal you know you can be in perimenopause and still get pregnant so some people don't mm -hmm. even realize because mm -hmm. they you know they maybe think that they just have slightly off periods or whatever it is that they're having you know symptoms of they don't really think about it because they're like well I'm you know I'm still mm -hmm. at the point where I'm having babies I don't need to think about this yet and mm -hmm. um, so yeah women are starting to kind of quite commonly be right in the center of both of those things so two massive life changes happening at the same time and understandably they're a little bit kind of like mm -hmm. rabbit in headlights about the whole thing <laughs> It's so much to deal with, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's when your sort of therapeutic um, coaching comes in. So tell us about, what, you know, what it is, how does it work, how does it help people and what do you enjoy about it? <laughs> yeah. So um, people are always a bit like, what's therapeutic coaching? Because it's kind of, it sort of sits in, in a kind of in-between space between where you'd have, you know, sort of therapies and counselling and then just standard life coaching. So standard life coaching is very much kind of, let's look at where you are, let's look at where you want to be, let's find a plan to kind of move you forward. Um, and what therapeutic coaching does is it says, yes, let's look at where you are, let's look at where you want to be, but let's look at what's happened in the past that's maybe keeping you stuck in the patterns and the habits that you feel like you can't break out of. You know, a lot of people feel like, they're always doing the same things or they start doing something and then they just don't ever quite kind of manage to to continue mm -hmm. and a lot of that is based in you know what's what's happened in the past and right. um we basically spend a little um little bit of time with each thing just going back and really thinking about when was the first time that you remember these thoughts happening for you when was the first time that you sort of what are your earliest memories of whatever it is that we're talking about? So, for example, you know, if somebody's come because they're struggling with overeating or, mm. you know, something similar to that, and they have got to a point where they're just like, I can't keep doing this, I need to do something about it. Um, 
you know, yes, we can give them lots of, you know, these are good habits to have, these are, are good ways to do things. But what really makes a change is if they can kind of really get in touch with actually what the source of that is, what's the root of that issue, because it's never just about the food or it's never just about the not wanting to go out and do exercise or whatever it is, you know, or, you know, not not wanting to kind of continue with a goal that they've set themselves. It's never about that. It's always about something else. Um, it's the why isn't it yeah I, I do do cover that actually in my um when I do a snack attack challenge which is all mm. about understanding why people snack and it's you know I never say to people you you know don't eat this or don't eat that it's you eat whatever you eat but ask yourself the question why yeah <laughs> why do you pick that food and why do you eat it at this particular time in the day and then yeah. a lot of things come up usually you know in the same yeah. way as you yeah yeah, it's yeah, it's and it's so important. I don't think that we do it very often. You know, we just sort of assume that we are how we are. You know, oh well, I've always been like this, so mm -hmm. you know, this is just how I am. Um, and what we want to do in therapeutic coaching is actually show you that there's a reason that you're the way that you are now, and that that isn't some kind of fundamental issue with you there is always a way for you to kind of change and and grow and progress and all of that kind of stuff um yeah so we do spend a, um a lot of time just getting in touch with what people are actually feeling because you know when you ask someone how they're feeling they'll say you know oh I feel fine or oh I feel sad or whatever mm -hmm. um but what we want is to actually find out what's really happening so you know we always are up in our heads and actually our bodies are telling us so much all the time but we ignore it you know oh yeah gut, everybody knows about gut feeling and all of that kind of stuff but actually our bodies tell us a lot all the time and it might be in various different places in our body so we always want to kind of try and find out where things are being held and whether we can kind of get that get that tension out and allow the body to actually feel comfortable and safe as well because mm. the body likes routine and likes you know it gets used to things and it's quite hard to get the body to do different things right even yeah now thoughts you know we go back mm. same thoughts do you, do you come you come across that yeah definitely I mean I think that's the the thing is you know people get stuck into patterns and it's patterns of thought it's patterns of you know how they how their body is um, and it's really trying to kind of get into the root of where that pattern comes from and how we can kind of change it because our thoughts are just thoughts. They're not the truth. Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, they're just stories that we tell ourselves. And, you know, if you ask one person about a situation, they'll tell you something completely different to somebody who's been in the exact same situation. So it's like, you know, we we always think that, if our brain is telling us something, then that must be the truth. But it's it isn't necessarily. Um, and that's really where you can make the biggest changes is when you can kind of get into those thoughts and go, is that really true? Is that really the <laughs> no, no? Is that thought that you're having actually the truth, or is it just something that has been put in there by possibly somebody else at oh, some point goodness. in your life? And sometimes it goes back a long, long way, right? Mm. Childhood, quite often. Oh, yeah, so often. So often people's kind of thoughts about themselves actually really stem from what they've learned in childhood or what somebody's told them, you know, somebody's told them that they're shy. So therefore they're like, oh, well, I'm, I'm shy. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I'm going to hold myself back because I'm not that, that kind of person. And you know that that may not have even been true at the time but definitely probably isn't true 20 30 40 years later yeah um, yeah so how I guess how do people feel when they've spoken to you um so generally I think people just feel much freer and lighter um 
I think I had one one lady who had had counselling before but had never done any kind of coaching and she was just like it's like a little it's like a little revelation because it's like actually you know yes we're talking about stuff that's happened in the past but we're also going and now like we can move forward and we can do things so it's I think it's a very positive process it's very kind of you know uplifting and yes during sometimes it's a bit a bit hard and you know sometimes there's you know emotions and and all of that kind of thing but it's always a completely safe space for people Mm -hmm. and I always like to leave people at least kind of you know feeling like they've they've progressed during during the session Mm -hmm. and you know most people do find it a really really positive and uplifting kind of experience amazing and you know quite often um people don't know what they need mm-hmm. you know in terms of support so yeah you know what would you say you know what, what what are the signs I suppose you know women should look out for when perhaps they would really benefit from talking to you you know it's like it's it's quite difficult to actually say to yourself my thoughts are keeping me <laughs> where I am I can't yeah. because of that so what yeah would you definitely find are easy to spot you know for people to make um them? So I'd say mostly it's, um, especially in this kind of midlife period, it's feeling more and more like you're just overwhelmed. And, you know, the, obviously ev- there is a huge amount going on for most people. Most people are juggling work and family and, you know, relationships and all of that, plus perimenopause maybe at the same time. Yeah. Um, so it's really, you know, when you're when you're feeling like you're a bit stuck, Like you just don't really know what you're what you need. You need to you know that you probably need to maybe do more exercise or maybe you need to eat healthier or, you know, the things that you think you probably need to do. But you finding yourself repeating the same patterns over and over again and, you know, starting something and then stopping it and just kind of stuck in a cycle of I want to do this, but I can't quite get there. Um, so obviously it's different for everybody you know some people come to me because they they know that I've you know I'm also a PT so they'll come and be like well I want help with you know my mindset in terms of I want to be healthy and fit but I just can't get myself to do it so they might start with that but invariably we end up somewhere completely different (laughs) um and and where do people end up? What's what's a, a a beautiful scenario? You know, when you think we've done some really good work there. Look where you're at. You know, what 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 be a good example? Yeah. So um, an example of um, a lady who originally came to me because she was convinced that she was addicted to sugar. Okay. She was. You know, I'm addicted to sugar, and I and she was like, I've I've spoken to you know other people who have given me diet plans and or plans to you know think and it's it's just not working so we started with that and we ended up with her actually she thought she was addicted to sugar but she was actually massive people pleaser she had that was her real like issue so that all came out later but it was you know she started with one thing but actually you know, there's, there was something deeper there. There was, you know, she felt like she was just being walked all over by people. She was stress eating because she just didn't know how to stand up for herself. Uh-huh. Um, and we talked about the reasons why she was like that. We discovered some things that had happened to her in the past. And by the end of it, she was really able to put boundaries in place for herself with in relationships that were a little bit kind of you know verging on the on the toxic and she by the end of it just felt so able to go ahead and you know the suddenly the sugar was not even an issue Mm. because that was just a that was just a little kind of crutch that she was using Mm -hmm. for what she really was struggling with which was just you know feeling like people were just walking all over her and she was very successful she would run her own business but when it came to personal relationships, mm-hmm. 
no boundaries whatsoever and okay. yeah so wow. just working working through that and and yeah and she's she's absolutely flying now that is amazing that's life-changing stuff isn't mm. it really it's uh yeah. really really powerful I think the key message here is is not to be afraid to ask for help and to find the right person for people you know yeah um, definitely you know like you know in my world in the nutrition world you know every nutritionist will be different or we have a mm -hmm. different approach my approach is quite relaxed I don't yeah. have to give these long <laughs> lengthy plans that people look at and kind of go oh my god what do I do now <laughs> where do I start yeah um and I guess it's the same same in, you, in your field is just finding someone that can offer different things and and starting on that journey giving it a go would you say that people yeah should... definitely I think that's the the thing it's like you know you it's it's quite easy to sort of stay stuck because you're not really sure where you need to go for help but it's one of those kind of situations where I actually just sort of need to try and you know see what works for you um, and that will be different for everybody you know for some people it will be very kind of straightforward and they'll know exactly what they want and need and then for other people they might need to kind of maybe talk to a few different people and see who who yeah. kind of resonates with them and and yeah. who they think can help them mm -hmm. I mean when I work with people again it's like it is it's very relaxed although it sounds like it's quite deep mm -hmm. it's you know we work with everything so you know it might be a lot of coaching it might be just some breath work and meditation and just mm -hmm. teaching people how to just relax a little bit because you know everyone's so busy and so kind of hectic mm -hmm. all the time that actually sometimes just allowing yourself the time to pause is mm -hmm. is massive it is um, it is time to be just be mm. <laughs> yeah exactly that's it it's just time to you know sit and actually really think about what you want from your life instead of you know the majority of women do just spend a lot of time worrying about other people and what they whether they're happy um, and I think, unfortunately, it when you get to this kind of midlife period, there's not only a lot more going on because people are quite often juggling kids and, you know, maybe caring for elderly parents, but the hormones stop you from being able to just put up with everything. So, you know, they do get to the point where suddenly everything's kind of blowing up because they can't they can't cope with it all anymore. Um, so yeah just taking the time to to really kind of stop pause find out what you want from your life rather than what other people expect mm -hmm. from you yeah I think it really is a good time to to think about yourself and not feel guilty about it yeah absolutely mm -hmm. you know because you know, the majority of women have spent their whole lives worrying about other people and feeling guilty about even thinking about doing anything for themselves but you know if if we fall apart then so does everything else around us so you know we actually owe it to ourselves and everybody else to kind of make sure that we're looking after ourselves in whatever way that is you know everybody needs something different some people will need things like what I offer and then other people will just need guidance in other ways so you know I might work with somebody who's in perimenopause but all they want is personal training they just they don't need anything else they just need the exercise part or you know they whatever but um at the same time it's like it's good to have that that off that option to be able to stop and talk about yourself for a little bit that's it and with regards to nutrition in a way it's Again, you know, you mentioned HRT, and I think there's been a lot of, you know, um, mm. press around that, and as a, you know, solution, if you like. But it's, it's, you know, it's not necessarily the solution. And actually, that first step before reaching out to, to the GP and and looking mm -hmm. for medication is actually pausing, stopping, thinking about your body and what it needs. Yeah. And when you do your therapy, you can really get back in tune with your body. To actually work out okay where are your hormones you know do they mm. do we need to help them <laughs> do we need to boost them in any way 
is there anything else going on? And very often there's lots of things going on, like stress and digestive yeah. health and all of these things. And people, when they start addressing these things, symptoms disappear. Symptoms yeah. actually disappear. So yeah, yeah, I think that's really that's the thing. It's really valuable that people know about these things because at the moment there's very much a kind of HRT is going to solve all your problems. Like boom, it's some kind of magic pill. And it's going to work for everybody. Mm. It's not going to work for everybody. Yeah. It also isn't an option for a lot of people, whether that's because they, you know, medically can't take it or yeah. they just really don't want to. Mm. And we need to, you know, we need to be clear that, like, actually there, there's a huge amount that people can do it within their own power to change how they feel. Um, and that, you know, nutrition, I think, is probably one of the most important things you know that there, there are like pillars aren't there and it's you know it's nutrition it's movement it's sleep and it's and it's pausing and allowing yourself to have a bit of time and yeah yeah, yeah. mind focusing on the mind and brain health and all of that what's yeah going, yeah basically yeah brilliant so fantastic conversation really interesting i hope it's going to inspire some ladies to take action you know and to feel that they shouldn't be embarrassed basically you know to to reach out it's okay it's totally yeah okay. you know our mums didn't have that help it wasn't there <laughs> no exactly and it was so taboo to talk about it you know it was a whispered conversation between women you know nobody else was allowed to know or like hushed kind of oh she's going through the change that's why she's suddenly a maniac (laughs) (laughs) and yeah you know we're very fortunate that actually there's you know there are a lot of resources out there um but it's kind of cutting through the the media stuff a little bit and and going actually really think about what what would benefit you not just you know what you're sort of told by the latest celebrity who who's talking about it indeed so to sum up what would be your three little tips you would share today for anyone who is feeling a little bit stuck and they're wondering what their next step should be you know to help them feel better a bit more in tune with themselves and perhaps having a little bit of directions in terms of you know what to do next yeah okay so I think my first tip would actually be to stop and to breathe because so many of us don't breathe I mean obviously we do because we're having to 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 stay alive but (laughs) but breath is so powerful you know you can really kind of tap into your body so there's a couple of things I like to do um in terms of breathing one is really simple it's called you might have heard of it's called the sip breath so if you're feeling stressed you take in a really big inhale Mm -hmm. and then when you think you can't breathe in anymore you go and sip in a tiny bit more air and then just let it all go oh I didn't know this one it just completely relaxes your body just allows it to completely kind of calm down okay and then the other thing is to do deep breathing and do a body scan and just Mm -hmm. work out where you're holding tension in your body you know and then just try and like release that most for most of us it's up here right like and just let yourself kind of relax (laughs) <laughs> because you can't think clearly if your body's mm. in that kind of stressed fight or flight sort of mode so first we want to get calm okay. relax mm-hmm. um the second thing that i think you know re- is really really helpful um is just writing it down writing your thoughts down so you know some people love to journal every day but just as a tool just get a scrap of paper and just write everything that's in your head that's bothering you it doesn't have to be like perfect it's just you could be words random words that you write down and then you can either never ever look at that again or you can do a little ritual and burn it and just release the thoughts release all the like heaviness out of your head just gives you a little bit of clarity because then you're left with less of less of the kind of noise and and turmoil Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think the last tip you know as a PT it's got to be about it's got to be about movement and finding a move finding a way to move that brings you some joy so that could be anything doesn't matter what it is you know it doesn't have to be formal exercise or anything like that um, 
but bonus points if you can do it outdoors and get some fresh air and some vitamin D at the same time and just you know be back in back in the natural world where we where we belong and yeah that's I think those are three things that are so simple to do but very few of us probably do them yeah I mean that can really calm your nervous system down and give you a little bit of of clarity um because I think you can't work out what you need unless you're calm and in a good place fabulous wow amazing really helpful so where can people find you um so I am on um Facebook Instagram um as master your midlife Mm -hmm. um I do have a a Facebook group as well it's called the same thing so just master your midlife Mm -hmm. um and I have a website which is also masteryourmidlife.com <laughs> <Surprise, surprise. laughs> <laughs> nice and easy to to remember um and yeah if anybody you know needs anything or or wants a little bit more information I'm always happy to you know have a little chat with people or just send them some resources um so amazing yeah. And on my side, I'm going to take this opportunity to um, share with people that I'm launching a nutrition challenge uh, in 10 days time, mm. which is all about smoothies. So it's called oh, Sip nice. Spring. And it's basically seven days of uh, yummy smoothies and uh, nutrition nuggets. So um, I will share the details under this video. <laughs> and uh, you're all welcome to join. It's a really, really fun week. And it's basically to show people how to put a really nice and balanced smoothie together that's going to be good for the body, that's not going to be too high in sugar, but that is going to be nutritious and giving you lots of energy so you can exercise and you can go for a nice long walk outside and not feel like you, you know, you need to snack or whatever, you know, what's, whatever's in the fridge, basically. So um, that started okay. on the 29th of April. So there we go. Um, right. So thank you so much, Emily, for joining me today. No, thank you for having me. It was really, it was really great. And I might join your smoothie challenge because I do love a smoothie. So you know. give it a go. <laughs> Amazing. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm sure we, uh, we may chat again at some, at some point. But um, I wish you a really good afternoon and thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Take care. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Right, I press stop.